A very good afternoon and welcome to NTV News. I'm Siksha Sharma. Let's take a look into the headlines first. Prime Minister Dahal heads to Uganda to participate in the 19th NAM summit. Foreign Minister South calls for deeper cooperation among member countries. At least 23 people killed following an explosion at a fireworks factory in central Thailand. More than 100 wounded. Pakistan launches retaliatory strikes into Iran. Move comes two days after Iran struck missile strike into its neighbor. El Madesh versus APF, Army versus Kosi, and Sudur Pashim versus Gandaki matches underway in Prime Minister Government's national cricket tournament. Welcome back to NTV News. We take a look into news in detail now. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal has reached Doha of Qatar in course of his destination towards Uganda to participate in the NAM Summit. The 19th Non-Aligned Movement NAM Summit is taking place at Kampala of Uganda from January 19 to 20. The Prime Minister was welcomed by Acting Ambassador of Nepal to Qatar, Kumar Rai, at the Hamad International Airport. The Prime Minister is accompanied by his daughter Ganga Daha, Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Siva Lamsal, and other senior government officials. The Ministry said on the first day of the two-day summit, Prime Minister Dahal will address the plenary session on the theme deepening cooperation for shared global affluence. On the same day, the Prime Minister will attend the state banquet hosted by the President of Uganda, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, in honor of the heads of the delegation from the NAM member states. In addition to the summit activities, Prime Minister Dahal is slated to hold bilateral meetings with the heads of the states, head of the governments and other dignitaries attending the event. Agendas of the summit include considering report of the preparatory ministerial meeting, reviewing the progress achieved in the outcome of the 18th NAM summit held in 2019 and adoption of the Kampala declaration among others. Nepal being a founder member of the NAM has been actively participating in all NAM summits. The principle of non-alignment is one of the bedrock principles of Nepal's foreign policy. NAM is a bloc with 120 countries representing around 60 percent of the world's population. A two-day ministerial meeting has already begun preceding the summit. Prime Minister Dahal will return home on January 21. Meanwhile, Foreign Minister N.P. South is already in Uganda attending the ministerial meeting in the prelude of the NAM summit. Minister for Foreign Affairs Naren Prakash South underscored that deeper cooperation is essential for finding solutions to global or regional problems the world is facing. Addressing the ministerial meeting of the non-aligned movement taking place at Kampala, the Foreign Minister said finding out global and regional cooperation is fundamental in the face of multiple challenges, he laid emphasis on the need that NAM must assert its collective voice to create an inclusive global order where all countries can prosper together, sharing global affluence equitably. He pointed out that NAM must play a pivotal role in promoting multilateralism, defending the UN Charter and international law, finding peaceful solutions to dispute, reforming the global financial architectures, creating a just global economic order for shared affluence. Preceding the ministerial meeting, the senior officials meeting was also held from January 15 to 16. Nepal and India have agreed to renew the bilateral treaty on trade, which was automatically renewed in November without addressing several of Nepal's concerns. This agreement was reached during the Nepal-India Intergovernmental Subcommittee IGSC on Trade, Transit and Cooperation to Combat Unauthorized Trade held in Kathmandu on January 11 and 12. With the automatic renewal of the Nepal-India Trade Treaty in November last year, 
trade experts said that Nepal lost an opportunity to negotiate and amend few articles important for the country to boost bilateral trade. It's been 46 years that the since uh, Nepal and India signed the trade mechanism. The trade treaty was first inked in 1978 and the latest renewal was made in November 2023 without changes. It is renewed every seven years. The officials say tentative date for the revision has not been fixed, but Nepal will propose the date. Let's take a look into a short break here. More news follows up on the other side. Do stay with us. Welcome back to NTV News, taking a look into further developments. Uh, the Election Commission has started dispatching ballot papers and logistics for the January 25 National Assembly elections. The ballot papers printed inside the Election Commission's headquarters are being airlifted to all provinces. Likewise, the Commission publicly released the sample ballot for the National Assembly election scheduled for January 25. The Commission published the sample ballot on its website on Wednesday, categorizing them based on provinces. Mayors, deputy mayors and chairpersons, vice chairpersons will cast their votes using a red colored ballot, while members of the provincial assembly will use a green colored ballot. In the national assembly election, 51 candidates from eight political parties are contesting. The Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority, CIAA, arrested Ward No. 9 Chairperson of Bonipari Municipality, Nirpes Bade, on bribery charges. The CIAA team took Bade into custody following his alleged involvement in taking 1.5 million rupees in bribe. He has been accused of accepting money from service seeker for facilitating recommendation for road construction. The arrest comes following a previous complaint filed against him. The CIAA team also obtained foreign currencies including 10,000 Japanese yen, 100 US dollars from him. A Hyundai car was also seized from his possession. Police also arrested his driver Padambadha Pradhan for further inquiry. Taking you to the international front now where 23 people have died in Thailand after an explosion at a fireworks factory in central of the country on Wednesday. The provincial governor there said images shared by the local rescue service showed metal debris littered on the ground and a huge plume of black smoke. The blast occurred at around 3 p.m. near Salakau Township in central Sufan Buri province. There was no indication of what may have caused the explosion. However, it is said officials were investigating what may have triggered the incident. We now take a look into more updates, but before that, let's take a short break. Pakistan on Thursday carried out strikes against a terrorist hideouts in Iran a day after warning Tehran of serious consequences over its attack on the Balochi group Jais al Adi's headquarters in its territory. A number of terrorists were killed during the intelligence based operation, codenamed Marbar Sarmachar. Pakistan's foreign ministry said. Iranian media, however, reported that seven people, including four children, were killed in the attack. The retaliatory strikes came days after Iran attacked terrorist targets in Pakistan, an attack that Islamabad claimed killed two children. Towards other update where trucks loaded with aid reached Gaza after passing through the Karim Shalom crossing. Israel stepped up strikes on war-torn Gaza south where medicines were expected to be delivered for hostages in exchange for humanitarian aid under a newly brokered deal. Earlier, Israel and Hamas have reached a deal to allow more humanitarian aid into war-ravaged Gaza. Qatari mediators say more than 132 hostages are thought to be still held in Gaza. Hundreds of trucks remain stranded on the Pakistan side of the busiest frontier crossing with Afghanistan. The Turkham border crossing between Pakistan and Afghanistan remains shut for the fourth consecutive day as a flag meeting between the officials from both the sides regarding visa restrictions for the drivers of cargo vehicles remain inconclusive. Pakistan has made visa mandatory for the drivers of commercial vehicles 
entering the country from Afghanistan. The measure aimed at improving security, preventing smuggling and promoting legal bilateral trade. A quick look into the highlights of what's coming up next. Heavy snow and freezing rain hit parts of northern and central Europe on Wednesday, bringing transport to a halt in some Scandinavian regions and causing major disruption at airports in Frankfurt and Oslo. At Frankfurt Airport, Germany's busiest freezing rain forced a halt to take offs, German news agency DPA reported. The airport cited a danger of de-iced aircraft icing up again as they taxi towards the runway. Some departures resumed in the afternoon as the rain subsided. Hundreds of flights already had been cancelled. The airport in the Norwegian capital Oslo was also closed temporarily as heavy snow reduced visibility for pilots. Airport spokesperson said a huge amount of snow and wind hampering traffic was very unusual and the resulting closure was extremely rare. Meanwhile, adverse weather conditions are forecast across much of northern and central France throughout at least January 18. A storm system is expected to initially bring rainfall to the Brittany region before precipitation transitions to a mix of freezing rain and snow as the system moves eastwards, eastward over northern France. Time for sports update. There are three fixtures today under Prime Minister Cupman's National Cricket Tournament and the match, the three matches are underway. The Madesh Province is taking on APF Club at the T Cricket Ground and the match between Srivivan Army and Koshi Province is underway at Mulbani Cricket Ground. Meanwhile, Sudhir Pashim and Gandaki Province is squaring off in Bhairahava Cricket Stadium. Earlier in yesterday's match, left-arm spinner Surya Tamang took five wickets to secure second consecutive consecutive win for Bagmati province in the Prime Minister Cup one-day cricket tournament. And also Karnadi uh, province secured its second successive win. Well, number one, Iga Swiatek battled back from two breaks down in the final set to beat Daniel Collins 6-4, 3-6-6-4 on Thursday and reached the third round of the Australian Open for the fifth successive year. Collins might be ranked 62nd in the world but has a good record at Melbourne Park and beat Siwatek in the semi-final two years ago before going on to lose to Ash Barty in the title decider. The 30-year-old Collins faltered in a serve at key moments in the match and Siwatek found her best tennis late in the decisive set to move into the third round clash with Czech Linda Noskova. And let's take a look into the headlines as a reminder of the top stories. Prime Minister Dahal heads to Uganda to participate in the 19th NAM Summit. Foreign Minister South calls for deeper cooperation among member countries. At least 23 people killed following an explosion at a fireworks factory in Central Thailand. More than 100 wounded. Pakistan launches retaliatory strikes into Iran. Move comes two days after stands. Iran struck a missile into its neighbor. And Madesh versus APF Army versus Kosi and Sudhir Pashchim playing Gandaki in the matches underway at the Prime Minister Cup Men's National Cricket Tournament. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead and Namaste.